is about how much you want it. How far do you want to push yourself? Even if it, if it demands everything away from you. But as a football player, you should get used to this as well. But as well, I still expect every human being to know we are all just human beings as well. There was a very close to my house. Uh, I worked there just to get the money to go to the beach and to buy the football shoes. Today's guest was our first international signing last summer. He is a player for the Nigerian national team. He was also a member of the under-17 World Cup winning side in 2013. He's played all across Europe before really making his mark, I shall say, in the Bundesliga. He was on the books of Liverpool before finally getting his chance in the Premier League for Nottingham Forest here at the city ground. He's a father. He's a keen cook. He also has a degree in... Business management, we'll chat all about this in a short while. Please welcome to the official Nottingham Forest podcast on and off the pitch, Taiwo Awonyi. Thank you. There we go. Did you like my little intro? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were smiling at a couple of things. I mean, from what I just said to you there, what at the moment as it stands is your race achievement out of the variety of stuff I just touched on? I think... Uh... It's difficult to pick one, actually, uh, but for me, I'll say being a father. I thought you might say that, and I was going to go, <laughs> going straight away off the pitch here. <laughs> Everyone at Forest is going, oh, tell us about playing at the city ground. But that's probably changed your outlook on life and, and your football career. Would you say so? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, it changed a lot uh, because it was uh, also my life was playing and doing the covid so it was a bit challenging as well, but it was worth it at the end. Yeah, I mean, I guess it was challenging, yet you probably got to spend possibly a bit more time together and just kind of watching her grow <laughs> and, you know, the pregnancy, which possibly was quite a yeah, special moment. Because uh, I could actually remember uh, then in Berlin, like, the the club have to ask me, like, are you sure you're sleeping well? Because you don't look like you're sleeping well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, at the end, uh, it was great. Yeah, so obviously you have a, you have a little son now mm. as well. We'll talk about him in a short while, but I want to talk about you, Taiwo, and I guess we probably should start at the beginning for you. It's been quite the journey to find yourself here. So I want to really talk about you and your family growing up in Nigeria. It was a long time ago now, but what was life like for you in Nigeria as a young boy? Yeah, uh, for me, I think, uh, obviously, my family is a religious family. I come from a Christian home. Uh, this part is one of the most important things to us. And uh, t talking about life, now at the moment, uh, the first thing I would say is, now when we look back, we just want to say we give, th we give thanks to God, which is the most important thing for us. But life back then in Nigeria, to be honest, is really difficult. <laughs> Because uh, in terms of football and outside football as well, for me, uh, was a bit challenging. Uh, but one thing I'm grateful for my parents is uh, they, they did everything uh, their best to make sure we go to school. Which is, even though my dad at one point was borrowing the money to send us to school, which at the end he has to pay back. Which when the journey of football started, I was able to be... The one to pay some of the money back to to keep him off the of the debt, uh, but was really challenging. What were some of the main challenges? You've mentioned the kind of money side of things, yeah. but what, looking back, were the greatest struggles in your opinion for you growing up? Yeah, for me, uh, in terms of football wise, I would say getting to the to the training ground because where I started was. I was just a boy playing on the street. Uh, I later joined a local club, Unicorn Football Academy now, because now obviously they are a bit a standard academy in Nigeria. But then uh, I have to walk uh, miles. Then uh, I could remember like there is a pole from my father's house to the training pitch. I have to count. I used to count all the poles like just for fun why I'm walking to the training camp. And uh, when I, I used to time myself and walking wise, obviously it's almost an hour to get to the to the training ground. 
and sometimes you get there late sometimes you get there a bit early and with a lot of Jesse at the <laughs> with me as well and was difficult moment uh but now uh, something I'm I'm happy and grateful because I can went through all those journey and was that a journey you used to undertake on your own because am I right in thinking it wasn't football wasn't something your family necessarily wanted you to pursue as a career <laughs> Yeah, I think uh for me uh at the beginning my dad want, wanted me to read uh, medicine. Uh he he wanted me to be a medic doctor. But uh I could remember I love playing football like from a kid I just play every time. So it gets to a point uh he also watched me playing and uh, at the end he supported me with my parent with my mother and my siblings. But the challenging part of it was getting the money to buy the football shoes. This I have no. Uh, going to the training page. This so sometimes I have to be the one to work myself. I've done almost every work in Nigeria back then. I work as a bakery. I work in the bakery. I work uh, as a bricklayer. What did you used to cook? What was your best thing you could cook in the bakery? <laughs> yeah, we just make bread. Oh, this, just bread. Okay, yeah. <laughs> bread maker. <So>, yeah, <laughs> because uh, uh, there was a bakery close to my house. Uh, I worked there just to get the money to go to the beach and to buy the full washes. And uh, I work uh, as a bricklayer as well because we used to lay, you know, the blocks that they used to build. We used to lay it. The I was, foundations. The foundation yeah. and everything. And so those are those the little things I do just to get the money to buy the football shoes and to be able to to sort myself out going to feed. Because, you know, obviously in the family to hit is something difficult. It would be hard to go to my dad and say, hey, Popsy, can you give me some, some grand there for me to go to the training ground? To me, it says it sounds a bit weird sometimes. So I never bothered him. Though sometimes when he get the salary, he will call me himself at one point and he said, ah, take this to buy your football shoes. It's not every time. It's hard as well because you were one of six siblings. Yeah. So there's a lot of you to kind of look after and try and help with all their hopes and dreams. You know, you're not the only child, obviously, in that family. When was the point that your dad realised that you had talent? How long did that process take? Was it years of him trying to deter you and you go into medicine or was it quite a, a quick realization that he thought oh, okay t, t has some skills here i'm gonna go and support him <laughs> i think uh it was if i could remember very well it was doing a local tournament uh the state have to play it and uh, because obviously for him you know like a military man because he's a prison officer his earning is not enough to send all the children to school and what he just does is get as much money as he can from his friend with the hope to pay back and his whole thinking was like maybe if this one was actually a medical doctor this one because my my sister is a nurse i'm a midwife presently in the uk as well and uh my elder sister also she's a pharmacist so my my older brother is like a teacher so he's trying to like okay maybe the school will be the best route to make living so at, at one point then uh we used to play like all this local tournament and then uh he said this time around you're not going because you have to write your exam so the almost the whole Quara state official they came to our house they are like we've heard how much you don't want him to play but please just allow him this one time to go to 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 play this tournament but before then like he never allowed me to play on the street so at one point also some big guys on the street came to him and like we are in the final and we're already losing. So and I could remember it was totally funny because everyone came to our house and like they already almost finished the second half and one of our players is still at home because it's just just a street football then. So he literally allowed me to to go with them and he follow us well. So I came onto the pitch, you know, all those little aside games is totally different from what we do now. And I was lucky to score a goal and we come back from being losing to winning the tournament. And that was how it started. But then it still didn't allow me to fully go into football until when I have to represent the, the state, which is going quite a state in, in the football tournament that the whole Nigeria used to play. And they have to send some official to, to my coach. So they have to come to my house in the night. And like, this tournament is very, very important for the state. And I was to be part of it. 
So that was the point he realized and said, okay, but we obviously have an argument like, if you want to play football player, if you want to play football or whatever you call it, then you have to pass in your school. So it's a bit difficult because I have to make sure I have good grade in school to play football in the training ground. So it's a big mix for me. The moment I'm not good in my grade, those times, there is no football. Smart man, that <laughs> sounds like. Obviously, he waited for someone of authority to come and tell him you were any good. He was like, well, how do I know if T is lying or not? You know, he may just be uh, selling me up the river here with uh, his ability on the pitch. And he also, from what you mentioned there, a military man, a prison officer. Yeah. He probably ran a tight ship at home, didn't he? <laughs> what was it like in your household with... With a dad who worked in a prison. I mean, sounds a little bit scary, your dad, Tyro. Oh, to be honest, he's one of the coolest men on earth. Very quiet, very easy going. The only thing he just tries to do is try not to get on his toes. <laughs> but he's, he's a loving man. Uh, I can't describe how, how important he is to me uh, because he's so caring in everything uh, he does for us and uh, also my mother as well. But for him, everyone was always like, ah, prison officer, it will be difficult, it will be Sounds this. Sounds scary. But actually, it's not. You just have to like follow his principle, then you are good to go. And what does he now, and your family, and your brothers and sisters, what do they think of what you've achieved in your career to date? Yeah, for me, I, obviously, I, I, bring, I brought them here uh, the last game, uh, the last few months, I think. Uh, I think they are very happy. Of, of course, I cannot say how they think in their mind, but when I look at them, uh, I can see how happy they are as a parent. And because this are the dream I've always been telling them. Sometimes we don't have DSTV to watch the Premier League, but we have a viewing center beside our house and everyone goes there to watch. And I, once I come back, I will be like, one day I will be playing in that league. So uh, coming to the Premier League and they see me achieve it as well, I think one part of them will be like, maybe we should have allowed him to start it <laughs> since he has wanted it, but I think they are very proud. Well, it hasn't prevented you, has it, achieving mm -hmm. what you have done now. Obviously, you've got a couple of siblings living in the UK. Where do your parents now reside? Are they here or in Nigeria still? No, they are still in Nigeria. Okay, so they come back and, and watch <laughs> when they can and see the delightful weather that we have today. It's a bit chilly outside. Yeah. How are you finding? Yeah, for me, it's fine. Uh, I've been in, in Berlin. In Germany, it's worse. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's worse there. <laughs> I know. Um, there was a story I read. Mm. It was a, a Coca-Cola tournament, I believe. Yeah. And you won a trip to London. Yeah. Tell me about that. It must have, again, put in your head and, and your fa family's head that actually you're quite good. I think uh, that was the actually the, the turning point for me because... Uh, then uh, it was a long, a long process to be, to be honest. Like because imagine we have thirty six states in Nigeria, and the other thirty six states have to participate in this tournament. I could remember before the one that I was picked from. The first one was done uh, in the in the stadium in Kwara State, but then they said I'm still a small boy. That maybe the next uh, one. But luckily for me, they brought the next one to my training ground. And I was opportunity to be the Amon player that was picked to represent Kwara State. And from there, we'd make a lot of screening in the whole Nigeria. And we are reduced to 16 in total. So it was really a tough, challenging screening. And at the end, uh, we came to Chelsea, Cobham, I could remember. Oh. And my first prayer to God then was just like, <laughs> if I can make it this far, I hope one day I have a football. I have a, I have a team here in, in England. And... Uh, that was how it all started for me. Well, I guess the fact that you could go to Cobham, you could see the goal in person, couldn't you, of what you wanted to achieve. Were there any Chelsea players there at the time that you kind yeah. of could see and try and learn from? Obviously, you weren't there for Chelsea. But. Yeah, then uh, I think oh, Michael Obi was there, uh, Didier Drogba, and uh, I think uh, Solomon Kalu as well. And uh, I think and they they literally came. Mikel actually came because he knows we're from Nigeria, and uh, he greeted everyone of us like like a big brother to us then. And we all just looking there and standing like, oh wow, <laughs> what a great uh, privilege! Well, that sowed the seed then for the Premier League. It took a while for you to to get there. I'm going to say in the capacity that you have now. Obviously, Liverpool came knocking, which I guess at the time. 
tell me about that because that must have been the kind of wow moment that you thought you'd achieved everything you wanted to, but it didn't quite work out like that, did it? Yeah, uh, for me, I've I've always said like uh, it's one of the best part of me, one of the best thing that that happens to me as a football player, because obviously after we came back from the tournament. Uh, on my local academy, Unicorn Academy, like uh, one of the ex international in Nigeria, Sheyo Lofinjana, scouted me and um, he brought me to his academy, Imperial Soccer Academy. And uh, I was taught in the academy and it was a miles away from, from my parents. So I'm actually used to living there, man. So uh, from there, I was. What age were you there? Uh, was around if I could remember around I was I think thirteen or thirteen thereabout. Then uh I was from this academy, like I was moving around we playing tournament and from there I went to um, the national under fifteen. So I was fourteen then. So I went to the under fifteen, from there I went to the under seventeen. We know what happened then. Yeah. World champion. <laughs> and that I mean we're kinda of, I know I kinda of jumped ahead of the Liverpool thing. The the World Championship yeah. kind of came about, again, a little bit of luck, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, um, like I said, uh, it was after the academy, I went to the under-15, and I was just in the under-15 national team, to be honest, and uh, I was caught that some of the under-15 players would be promoted automatically to the under-15, and among the players that was picked, I was lucky. To be among them as well. Well, talented, but lucky. <laughs> I know you've described it as luck, but there's got to be talent in there as well, too. I think <laughs> it's a mix of both, uh, because if you're not talented, you will not be here as well. Uh, so for me, uh, at that point, I, I went to, to the under 17, and it was obvious like the screen is almost over. They just have one much, one match left to play, it, and uh, the coach called me, and that was just it for me. So from there we went to the to the Nations Cup and we went to the World Cup and I was not like the the number one striker I was the like the second striker, so uh, one of the striker was I the success. Then during the tournament uh, he got injured and I was brought in and immediately I came in my first game I scored and I've been and all the games I played I scored like four goals or something and we won the we won the tournament so. After the tournament, everyone was expecting me to, to move to one of the biggest clubs as well. But I was patient because I was just waiting. Then no club, a lot of clubs came to me, but we didn't actually went for any because I was still on that age. So when I was 18, I had a lot of offers on the table. But obviously, one day, Itashi Yellow Jana, the owner of the academy, just called me that. Uh, they just called him from Liverpool and they had a discussion about my contract and that was how it all so that was how I found myself signing for for Liverpool uh, from 2015 I mean just quickly going back to the World Cup there you seized the opportunity though didn't you I guess that's probably what your faith has also instilled in you the fact that when your time comes you have to make the most of that opportunity and you did that and, and look where it led you to. I think uh, I think for, for most Nigerians, because if you look at the under-17 tournament, almost uh, Nigerian wants, won me the most because every player knows this is just the turning point for you. You, you either get it right at this point or you... Because not everyone has this kind of opportunity because the old 36, maybe 20 will be picked and... The process for you to get to the under-17 or the under-20 or the national team is a long process. So for you to be opportune to be part of it, you have to make the most out of it because it doesn't come always. The competitiveness in Nigeria, is it as much as we see over here as well in this country? Is it the sport that every single young boy, possibly now young girl as well, wants to be a part of? Exactly. Yeah. Because it's, 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 it's just like that because... Everyone wants to be the next Messi. Everyone wants to be the next Ronaldo. Everyone wants to play football. So, obviously, like, to get into the national team is a process that is a bit difficult because the coach cannot go to all states and, like, how I see one great player there. It doesn't work that way. What do you think gave you that advantage to be one of those, like you said, 20 players that I got think, picked? 
I think for me, uh, if I could remember, then uh, even now, what yeah. sets you apart? Why are you playing in the Premier League? Yeah, for me, if if I'm talking about where I'm in the Premier League, I think it has to be about how passionate you want it, how much you want it for yourself, and uh, obviously with the help of God as well. But the key is just how much you want it. How how big is your dream? Do you are you the type that 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 stop dreaming, or you are the one that always keep on believing? Like even if the old world said, "Hey, Taiwan is not possible," I always tell them that's not for me. So far, it's possible for this guy. If I can push myself to the limit, I can achieve it as well. So I think that's the key for for me. And uh, a lot of people have said, "Oh, maybe it, maybe Premier League is not a good league for him." Yeah, obviously now I'm injured, of course, but I already scored four goals as well. So I've already achieved one of the dreams I wanted. It's just what's next for me on the line. So it's about how much you want it as a player. It's about how much you want it as a person. So it's about the patience, the hard work, and the dedication you put into it. So I think that's what set everyone apart for me. I know I keep moving away from it. Let's go back to Liverpool. Um, obviously, got never got a chance to play for them, and pretty much from what we've all read, it was just the visa issue. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, for me, I think, uh, like I said, uh, I was I signed when I was when I was in ten. So for me, I even have no idea of what is a work permit. I, I wouldn't either. Don't I worry. have no idea. <laughs> the only thing was on my head was I just wanted to sign for a football club and especially the Premier League. So when Liverpool came coming, I was like, no way, I'm just going there. So I signed and immediately was signed with my dad. The next day, I'm on my way to London to apply for a Germany visa uh, because I was told I would be loaned to FS4 Frankfurt in, in Germany. Then uh, I was excited because it was my first time in Europe, first time, second time in the UK, which is my dream, and first time in Germany. So I just fly over to Germany. Then after the season, I came back to Liverpool. After then again, I was still with the under-20 under national team, go through all the process of the national team, then loan again to NSN Nime again, then came again. Then that was when I started asking myself, what is happening? Then uh, after the after we signed uh, in the FS4 Frankfurt, my 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 boss Sheyolo Fijana explained to me said, before you can play in Liverpool, you need a work permit. So you didn't even really know that I, was why you were still being sent out online. Yeah. For for me, the the loan was just like because obviously at that at that point they are like you cannot make it at this point because you still anything. Maybe it's better to get an experience outside. So he explained to me, like, it's better to always go on loan to play and develop more as a player. But then uh, he explained to me, before you can play with Liverpool, you need a work permit. So that was when I, I also made some search and I also made some findings myself. And I discovered before you played uh, in, the, in England, you need a work permit. And before you get the work permit, you need to play, like, then I think they said 80% or 70% for your first team national team. And at that point, I was still playing on the under age. I've not really played for the first team. And there's this uh, ranking also. They said uh, this special talent, which uh, when you when you win the World Cup and you win like the best player in the World Cup, like Kelechi and Nacho did, then it was opportunity to get the World Permit. But for me... You I, still won the World Cup. Yeah, but I, I didn't want the most... Accolade, <laughs> I mean, come on, World Permit. So, <laughs> so uh, at that point, I zero my mind like, okay... Then maybe the next point for me is just to work hard as much as I can to be able to get into the national team of Nigeria. But obviously, like I said, with the national team of Nigeria, it takes a lot to be, to get into the team. You have to do even more than what you've been doing for yourself. And I was actually doing quite all right when I moved to Belgium. Then I was expecting to make the national team. Liverpool also, I must, to be honest, they did everything also. They contacted the federation, but I was not called upon into the national team. So that keeps making the process long. So every time I came in, into Liverpool, the question would be like, will you rather stay in the academy, play with the youth 23, or rather go on loan? And for, for me, I've played in uh, in Germany's second division, I've played in Holland, I've played in Belgium first division. So I'd rather always tell them, I'd rather go on loan instead of staying 
in the academy. So I keep on going alone and coming back with the help the national team we we came into pass but it never came true. So at one at the last point I have to make the decision of okay. Obviously I moved to Germany. The first year in Mainz was a bit scumbo. The second year was Union Berlin and luckily for me they found in love with me and they they like okay we want to buy him permanent. So it was a long process of discussion as well because we rather allow him to go on loan with you for one more year then bring him back. Then at this point there was this rule that said if you play like 50% in the first Bundesliga or in the first one of the top 5 league you are enabled to play to get the work permit to play in England. So after the first year uh I must say thank you to Liverpool as well because At that point I believe they see me as a boy that have really developed throughout those years and they apply for the work permit for me which I was granted. So the moment I was granted it was a long discussion of whether another loan with Union Berlin then come back or Union Berlin was ready to buy me as well. So it was a decision with me and my agent and I said instead of going on loan again Thank you for everything you've done for me which I really appreciate it brought me since I was 18 and put me through all this long process which made me who I am today I decided to go permanent with you in Berlin and say bye to Liverpool Yeah you said there as well uh, Union Berlin fell in love with you and it almost if a club loves you you are going to play so much better just knowing how supported you are um not saying that liverpool weren't because you said you know the years that you spent there um they were always supportive trying to get you your work permit what was it like though when you used to go back in the summer and it was always kind of fleeting visits did you manage to build up relationships with the players or the members of staff at liverpool tour because it was such a short stint of time when you were there i think uh for me uh i think always i'm always most time with the with the academy And uh who was there at the time with you? Uh any of the guys now in in the first team? I think uh if I could remember uh one time I was with uh I think Nico. Mm-hmm. I was with but not every time Nico was obviously playing with the first team. Yeah. But obviously I, I know them and uh I forgot maybe a few couple of names but they were already in the first team actually. And uh a few players as well to be honest but I forgot. But that kind of proves that It was that fleeting kind of visit yeah, every time that because, the relationship didn't build. Because this year I'm there it's a new set of player. The next day I'm there and to be honest Liverpool tried to bring me into the first team like two pre-season then I was injured. So I could remember Klopp was always like you're injured. So the first time I was able to go to pre-season was them with them was the point I decided to go permanent with you in Berlin. So I even literally left the training camp in Austria to sign for for you know Berlin because you know Berlin was obviously at Austria at that time so I just switched location easy easy <laughs> so uh it was meant to be wasn't it yeah yeah so for me it was a bit challenging to be honest because you you came in now you know I for me I always zero my mind I know obviously I'm not playing with the first team but a lot of Nigeria I don't understand why some people will say ah maybe it's not good enough maybe is that it can make the team maybe but you know football not everyone knows was be it's not just about going on the field of play there is a lot of paperwork has to be done but many people don't understand that so for me i always said to myself if i came into liverpool okay i'm back training let's see how it goes i know obviously i'm going all alone again so i already make up my mind most time so in in all those challenges as well like i said earlier is about how much you want it how far do you want to push yourself even if it, if it demands everything away from you so i'm used to that kind of movement every year and i still believe this is what makes me who i am today was that difficult when people from your country were almost going against you a little bit and not really understanding why you weren't playing for liverpool did that make things a bit more challenging for you are you someone that lets things like that affect you Yeah I think uh to be honest uh if people said oh it's not difficult you obviously lying because even on the field of play now you still have people criticize you for how you played I think for as a football player you should get used to this as well but as well I still expect every human being to know we are all just human being as well so I think that part 
it's not what you can change, but the best you can do for yourself is just once you add something like that, you take the good part of it, maybe it's a way of pushing them to tell you, okay, maybe you can do more for yourself, or it's a way you let it affect you and it bring you more backward, or you use it, you use it as a tool to challenge yourself for, for the next steps. So I think for me, most times when they say that, that's how I take it. So because I've seen people that tell me, oh, you, I've seen people that actually literally tell me, you can only come to the national team when you play for Liverpool. Obviously, Liverpool was actually waiting for the national team to call me so I can play for them. So you see the turnaround. I've seen, in Nigeria, I've seen a well-known someone that tell me, yeah, I, we know you from the youth. You've really played so well from the youth. We, obviously, they know, everyone knows me in Nigeria then. Mm. And for me, everyone was always like, ah, we think maybe you should play for the national in the for the first team. And the national team is actually waiting for me to play for Liverpool, whereas before I can play for Liverpool, I need to play for the national team. So it's a bit of strength. In strength. Chicken and the egg. You're not really sure what comes first. <laughs> Hopefully now. I mean, we'll talk about the Bundesliga because mm. you obviously excel there at Union Berlin, but you're at a Premier League side now, guys. Nigerian national team. I know you've, I know you've obviously made your debut for them and you've got a few caps under your belt, but I'm sure the kind of person that you are, you want more. Um, let's talk about Bundesliga yeah. and Union Berlin. We spoke a little bit about the fact that they loved you and that kind of possibly is why you excelled over there and really made your mark on the footballing world. Urs Fischer, your coach, you talk about really gelling with him. What was he like to play under? Uh, for me, I think uh, this is a club I can talk about all my life. I'll just sit back. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, because uh, obviously, I think not only in football, in everything you do, like the moment you, you are shown the, the love, the moment you are appreciated, even from a staff to a boss, if your boss appreciate what you've been doing for him or, or her, you, you're ready to do everything that will make the company go well, which is what I think. And I think this is what happens in Union Berlin. For me, I always, even when I left, people were like, ah, maybe Union Berlin will struggle. Every single person I met, I said, no way. I told them, I said, it's not possible. I said, for me, this team will only struggle maybe when the coach left. This is what I said to them, because it doesn't matter which player they sign. You've seen the team. It's not a team like you think they, they sign, but look where they are now. Almost fighting for the title, almost yeah. playing the Europa League, which is obviously the work of the coach. So it's a team of whether the best player left today, the next one they are bringing in, the coach will always find success. And for me, when I was there, I think uh, it's a bit of uh, both as well because obviously they love they love everyone, not only me. Every player there, from the staff to the coaches, it's just like a family. And I'm this kind of guy as well, because when I stay in a place where I felt well welcomed, well appreciated, I think you, you have the confidence to, to show what you have in you. You have no stress. And I think the best of you, this is the point that the best in you will come out. And this is what you know, you know Berlin is all about when I was there for me. You played obviously over there in a weird time as well, kind of with COVID, um, when you couldn't have the ultras in the stadium. What's it like when the ultras are in the stadium? I've kind of seen them on TV, haven't ever been. I've seen pictures of them. They look like another set of fans. We talk about the 12th man here in the city ground. I think, to be honest, for me, it's almost the same uh, similar vibes. Yeah, to be Cra honest. like crazy, um, another level, right? Um, when I came into the to the city ground, to be honest, uh, I, I could remember against West Ham, uh, with the way the fans are, I obviously like remember how, how you know Berlin are as well. Because I think they have both similarity in terms of being behind the team. And during the COVID, you could literally hear them from outside the stadium. Because yes, there is COVID. No player, no, 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 nobody was allowed in the stadium, and we're playing without without crowd, obviously. But it doesn't seem like they are not there because they are behind the fence of the stadium, and you could literally hear every single word they are saying to show you how passionate they have for for their team. And this is like one of the key also for them. It's like yeah, you can't come here anyhow and believe you and believe you just run us over and win us. And you know Berlin as well. If if I could remember, I think they've we've only they've only lost maybe once or twice in the stadium. 
and it's from it's like a fortress there. <laughs> uh, forest louder, the fans here louder. <laughs> I think they are both say. they are both loud to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> You kind of mentioned how relaxed, again, you were made to feel over at Union Berlin. What do you think was the biggest lesson that you learned there, which you've kind of taken forward now coming to Forest? For me, because before I left, obviously, I had a chat with the director and with the, with the coach. Was it a difficult decision? Obviously, it's, it's very, very difficult. Because at one point, I'm thinking, uh, Europa competition. Yeah, we'll, I played in the Conference League, but... I scored the last goal that pushed us into the Europa tournament and the off club, they are happy and I'm at the point of losing the chance of playing the Europa competition and at the same time being glad that I have the opportunity of achieving my dream as well. So uh, with the chat with the coach and with the director of the of the team, it was it kind of gave me a bit of peace to make my decision as well. When I when we, when I discuss with them, but obviously it's a place where you love to be every time. But I think uh, if I could remember very well, in life you just have to be ready for the steps. Is actually I want to know: Do you think Union Berlin will take it to Dortmund or Bayern Munich soon? Do you think they'll win the Bundesliga? For me, I said to my wife every day. I said I still believe they will win it. How many years is it going to take them? I think if they don't win it this year, I still believe they will win it next year. How has the Premier League, since being here, lived up to everything you expected it to be? Oh, well, for me, I think uh, it's been great, to be honest. Uh, in terms of the intensity of the game, because what I said to myself was, like, the moment I moved to Germany, my, my goal was like, OK, I want to use two years here to move to the Premier League. That was what I said to myself. Obviously, it took me three years. One year in Mainz and two years in Union Berlin. But no one's, we ask you, why do you move to Premier League when you are loved in, in Union Berlin? This is like personal decision to, to, to me. But I've always wanted to experience which one is the most difficult league. Which is? For me, I still believe, I think, the Premier League. Uh, and I would choose the Premier League in terms of the players that, that, that is in the clubs. I think in terms of the intensity and how difficult the league is, I think I still believe they are almost on the same limit. I still, this is my own personal belief. But well, you should know you've played in the yeah, both. Yeah, because I think I think the only thing, the only difference between the both leagues is this, the set of players. I think in in Bundesliga you've seen maybe Bayern Munich, Dortmund. These are the clubs that have maybe like the top mm -hmm. top top players, whereas the club has like average minimum player. But the Premier League has, you can see... The depth of the, players. The depth of players. And I think this is what makes the league a bit faster, a bit quicker than the Bundesliga. But in terms of similarity, I would still believe they are almost the same. And obviously, you played against someone like Erlen Haaland. Did you expect him to be as good as he has been <laughs> since coming over here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was what I said, because obviously in, in, uh, in Germany, Haaland, with the way he played as well, you know how great he is as a player. And came in here also makes it look very much easy. <laughs> when you're back from injury, you'll be flying. Like, just watch your space. Something you just said there, you predicted you'd be three years in Germany. Are you going to predict how long it's going to take for us to win the Premier League? <laughs> Go on, do it on camera. <laughs> he obviously, it obviously works. What yeah, you're for me, I think, uh, I think uh, with the way we're going, uh, I think the standard, what makes me choose uh, the club is... The meeting I had, uh, and you can see from the owner, from the coach, how ambitious they are. And I think for every individual, this is this should be your goal. You should be ready for the next steps. You should be ready to push yourself to the limit. And I think with the way we're going, obviously, I still see us like being in the European competition in one, two years. In one year, to be honest. This is next season, obviously. This is my own personal goal. I don't know if, I believe maybe it will be the same for the club as well. But I think this is how I see us. And from there, we'll take it off. And how much have you loved being a part of this very much new look Forest side, which has kind of been developed, like I mentioned it, you were one of the first international signings of the summer. Um, for you to come in and then see what was being built around you, how exciting was that to be a part of? 
Yeah, for me, uh, I think uh, one of the one of the things I said to myself. Obviously, my sister used to say to me, and I kind of always take it with it with, for my as well. I think sometimes your journey needs to scare you. Yeah. I think uh, sometimes if it doesn't scare you, it's it's not really worth it. It's not for me. It's good to be comfortable, but too much comfortable is not good. So sometimes I think you need to be a place like where when you look forward, you'll be like. Oof. That's fire up there. So your goal should be how sh- how will I maybe quench the fire or how will I step over it? So that should be your goal. And when you look at how we started the season for the first maybe four or five months, everyone was like, for sure, it's going bad. For sure, it's going bad. But look how things turns around. I think that's the key moment for, for everyone, from the coaches, how, how much work they put into it to the players, how much work we put into it, which we are still building, obviously. But everyone can see, obviously, that this. if at the end of the at the end of the season, it will come out good, which it will, you can be part of how how tough it is for you as a as a person, like doing those process of difficulty, what you do to overcome it and all that. I think that is what makes you a man. That is what makes you said, yeah, I'm I'm proud to be part of that journey, and. That's obviously one of the reasons uh, I'm happy to be here as well. At the beginning, it was tough. And yeah, the league is still on. I still believe we still have more to do for ourselves. But I think it shows no one should just write us off, which obviously at the beginning, many people did. Oh, maybe that one is not good signing. This one, maybe this one, that one. But obviously now we've really passed the limit of where people expect us to be. But we're still building something great. And that should be the challenge for us. So for me, Every time, your journey should always scare you. And if it doesn't, then I don't think it's worth being a journey that you can be on. Well, if the entire squad have the belief that you do, I definitely believe that we're going to be fine and we'll go on to be part of Europe in in a couple of years' time. Um, I want to ask you a couple of things about you as well because I want everyone to kind of get to know the real tea as well. Obviously, you're a father now, which is... Very cool. Um, you're balancing like a lot of things, but you also recently got a degree in business management, and which kind of piqued my interest. Into are you already thinking about a future? Like, do you have a lot of different <laughs> business interests that you want to kind of get involved with? Um, what? Did, why? Why did you want to go about getting that? Yeah, uh, I think for me, uh, I kind of picked that from my dad because obviously, um, and my mom as well. I could remember they they are both they they are both parents that wanted their children to be in school. Like they still believe because I still believe at the end of the day you can't play football till you are forty, fifty. Maybe some can, but for not everyone will have the privilege or opportunity to. But for me, uh I could remember when I was in Liverpool, I was just thinking, they say I'm in Germany, next year I'm in Holland. I can't just be sitting and then I was a bit single. So I just asked myself, okay, what can I do to keep myself busy? So I enrolled I myself on, on a course online uh, at the London School of uh, International Business. So that was, uh, then after I got the degree for two years, then I was like, okay, why don't you push again to go for the bachelor degree? So I went again in uh, Buckingham University. So for me, I was just like, just keeping myself busy at the moment. But obviously, I'm this guy that I had my high my in, in business things. I I think of many things I can put my, my hand into business-wise in the good part. But just trying to keep myself busy and at the same time looking ahead for the future. But what I said to myself is the future will always take care of itself. Mm-hmm. You can only take care of what you are presently. So that's part of me, just being able to like keep myself busy. And at the end, I see like it's something I can really fully, fully go for. And I came into the Premier League, it was almost the time for my graduation. So you see, all things work together for good. I mean, we were told me you used to be a baker and a bricklayer, so possible <laughs> careers going forward. And we know you're a keen uh, cook as well. We've heard that Scarpa loves eating, con- well, drinking condensed milk and Oreos. Ryan Yates is a great peanut butter curry cook. What do you cook? Because obviously you say you're a good cook. What's your uh, best recipe that you'd uh, rustle up for the club here? Uh, to be honest, uh, I think I don't know if I can cook uh, most English food, but for okay. me... 
Every African food. Every What's African. your staple then? What's your kind of African staple dish that you cook me? Everything. everything. I've got. The, I'm not. I'm not that big. I don't yeah. eat everything. Yeah, for me, I think uh, in Africa we have what you call like jollof rice. Yeah. And uh, I think I'm specialist. I'm specialist in this. I, I'm very good in, in jollof cooking. rice specialist. Okay. Yes, yeah, jollof rice, and obviously we have like the the swallow stuff. And when we, when I say swallow, we have. I'm talking of we have fufu. Uh, but different kind of swallow because you have to make it, then you have to make the soup separate. And the soup can be like okra, vegetables, or a goosey soup. It depends on what you want with it. And I can literally cook everything, to be honest. It sounds very technical right now. We're going very techy <laughs> on this. I might have to ask Manuel Dennis, actually, because I believe when you were over in Germany, he used to pop around for dinner. The, the thing is, even... Uh, for, for, for Dennis, uh, we've known each other since I was a kid, yeah. and... When I was in Belgium, he, it was he, Belgium, in, yeah. in Belgium as well. Uh, the the thing is for me because then I'm single and uh, it's I said Need some it, company. I just Come round. I just make myself busy most times because most of the things I cook, I I literally go on YouTube to learn it and I cook it for myself because after training, you don't have time to to go out to eat so. I cook and I put in the fridge. And Dennis used to, Dennis and some of my friends, they used to come and sometimes they used to even call me restaurant. The restaurant <laughs> man, here we go. So it was, was a good time then, to be honest. Have you learned any British dishes yet? Uh, not really. Not interested in Because though. most time I eat African food anyway. Not interested in learning the local <laughs> Nottingham cuisine. Okay, the fans aren't going to like that, T. <laughs> um, I want to clear something up as well. Is your son... Named after your best pal, Emmanuel Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the answer. Oh, uh, well, uh, his name is Emmanuel, but it's not because it's named after my best pal, to be honest. <laughs> Does he think it is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes when uh, Dennis came to my eyes, I was always like, Emmanuel, you know us. You are my friend. You are, will be at the same name. So, <laughs> actually, like the name was just um, like uh, a name that comes to my mind when I when his wife, his mother is still uh, pregnant, and because you know, like I said, I came from a Christian family, and every decision you make, I'm not saying Christian family makes me the best, best, best believer. No, I still have my flaws for sure, but every decision you make, you have to like. Pray to God as well before you made the decision. And uh, for me, that's how the name comes about, to be honest. And Emmanuel is just one of the name of Jesus. Exactly. I wanted to clear that up. Emmanuel Dennis, you now know. <laughs> you didn't name your son after you. I mean, T, I could chat to you all day. Um, I'm conscious that you've got to go back and have some physio and whatever else. Thank you so much for your time. We do have one more thing. Yeah, no we have a leaderboard. Are you ready for this? We've got some questions to ask you. So, this is the most serious part of the interview. We've got our leaderboard. You can see at the moment, Ryan Yates sitting number one with five points. And you've got Scarpa, Scarpinia, as he wanted to be called, with three and a half there. So, I've got six very difficult questions to ask you. Question one. Name the four other clubs that Emmanuel Dennis played for in Europe. He hasn't played up to four. Well, I... Soccer base says he has. It's, it's and so does transfer market. So uh, I think he's still he played for Dynamo Kiev. Yeah, I played for Club Bruges. Mm -hmm. And he played for FC, FC Cologne. Yeah. Watford? And Watford. <laughs> of course I should remember Watford. It's just behind me. Yeah, yeah but I got that. Watford. Yeah, for. <laughs> you can get Watford. He just signed yeah, Watford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if we're giving him that. Yeah, that. for anyway, sure. Next. How many goals did you score in the Bundesliga last season? 15. Yay, that was easy. That was easy. <laughs> you look at me like she's not even going to know that one. Okay, okay. you scored Forrest's first goal back in the Premier League after 23 years. What minute did you sign it in? Sign it in, score it in. Minute, Come Jesus. On. So. Who was it against? You know who it was against? Uh, West Ham. Yeah. Uh, I love how he raises his eyebrows, like, West obviously. Time. I think it's in the 26th minute, if I'm not mistaken. You are, second, you are mistaken. You're very much mistaken. I scored in the first half, right? <laughs> first half, I think. Ah, I think 22. You're so out. It's not nowhere near right. Uh, <laughs> oh. oh. 
Is this is like I history think, making. Is it forty five? This is gonna be in the pub quizzes going forward. Forty five minutes, yeah. Forty five 45 minutes, yeah. I'll give you that. It was forty five plus two additional oh, minutes. Yeah. So technically forty seven, <laughs> I'll give you forty five. Okay. You have that. Right. Who crossed the ball to you when you scored oh. against Liverpool? Oh. Oh, he's never gonna remember. He can't remember oh, what Steve minute Cook. he played the he scored Steve the first Cook. M. Oh my god. <laughs> Did someone tell you that off camera? No. I'm dubious. Okay. I have done my head. Question five. How many of your fellow countrymen currently play in the Premier League? Phew. Uh, because wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, gosh. I actually, oh now I this actually, is gonna be I actually know it, but but I uh, yeah. But wait, I have a question. Okay. So I have a question. <laughs> If you if you born in England and you play for Nigeria, for you play for the Super League, yeah, because you can still play for the country, so they're so cl- they're I, still classified as Nigerian. A Nigerian for sure. Yeah. Aha, uh-huh, that's what I want to know. So we I are. know who you're thinking of. Yeah, in the day it will be. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're thinking of. Yeah, in the day it will be a Nacho, Dennis, and me. That's five. In the day and Paul Nacho, that's six. Six. Eight. Eight. In the Premier League. <laughs> Ah, oh, wait, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Indidi, Indidi, Eenacho, Frank Oyeka, Dennis, Paul Onacho, Alex Iwobi, Awone Itaiwo. <sighs> Where's the last guy? Where are you? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Where are you? Eat, 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 eat. Where's the last guy? Joe Rebo. Oh, Joe! <laughs> <laughs> You didn't get it, mate. You didn't oh, get it. Oh, my God. That was painful, though. Oh. <laughs> Three oh. out of five, but you have another chance to get a bonus point. So the last question for a bonus point, yeah. you have to listen to something we're going to play in your headphones. It's a player saying a line. Can you name the player? Please play this line. I'll be there for you when the rain starts to pour. I'll be there for you like I've been there before. I'll be there for you because you're there for me too. What's he saying, firstly? He said, I will be there for you when the rain starts to pour. (laughs) I'll be there for you uh, when you're there for me. Forest Bay. He's a forest player. He's a forest player. He's a teammate. Can you play it again, please? I'll be there for you when the rain starts to pour. I'll be there for you like I've been there before. I'll be there for you because you're there for me too. Sounds like a Brazilian voice. Well, that's elimination of four players there, isn't it? So <laughs> <laughs> the odds are in your favor now. But I'm, I'm on the right track, right? Yeah. Sound like Scapa, though. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Should I tell you what he was saying? <laughs> He was quoting Friends because that's how he learned English watching the sitcom Friends. Ah! <laughs> uh, I mean, like, we love to test these guys here. <laughs> Taiwo, you got four. You are second in our leaderboard. Oh, good. Well done. That was no painful, bad. guys. There we go. <laughs> Taiwo, thank you so much for chatting to us today. Um, Wish you all the best with your you. injury and your recovery and we can't wait to see you back out there very soon. Guys, if you're watching at home, of course, remember to subscribe um, so you can watch all the episodes and remember to subscribe and like on the official podcast app as well. And we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. All right, thank you.